It is difficult to say which game from my childhood had the largest impact on me growing up. Was it the countless hours of Warcraft 3, or was it the frightening terrors of my adolescent playthrough of Doom 2? Certainly, it couldn't have been the first time that I ever defeated Paper Mario on the GameCube. No. Although those do have a special place in my gaming career, I do not believe that they have created such a lasting effect as Guild Wars 1 has, or simply put, Guild Wars Prophecies. This game has created memories that have lasted a lifetime, and honestly, its simplistic approach brings a smile to the face of this weary gamer to this very day. So sit down, grab a cup of coffee, and listen why Guild Wars was the best game that I never played. Guild Wars 2 has been a staple in my game library for many years, and more so recently. As I have played through the game, I have enjoyed all that it has to offer. I occasionally am reminded of the game that set up Guild Wars 2 for its success. Guild Wars Prophecies was an action RPG that ate up most of my adolescent youth and admittedly I wasn't even really aware that the game existed. I was just too focused on getting World of Warcraft, wondering why I couldn't play the game. Dad wasn't the most excited person to have me playing video games. He didn't necessarily enjoy it. Him being the outdoorsy type, he believed it was a passing phase. Joke's on him, huh? My mom, however, purchased Guild Wars for me. My dad didn't say anything about Guild Wars, he only said something about World of Warcraft. Well, a hop, skip, and a jump away, I have created my account, and I created my warrior. Except I wanted the fiery dragon swords. Soborn was Rook Searing Blade, the epitome of strength and honor, defending the weak, challenging the dastardly. Now, to be sure, I poured an untold amount of hours into this game, and without a doubt, it was some of the best gaming memories that I have with any PC or even console game. Ironically, however, I don't have exact memories of what I did during those countless hours. I remember the landscapes, the, the skills, the multi-classing, but I never beat the game. I have no memory of progressing through the prophecy story and even less of the faction story. I have no idea what had happened in this time, but that isn't why Guild Wars was the best game that I never played. It was the best game because that even now, I have literally the fondest memories playing just in the starting zones. I remember speaking to other players who were logging in for the first time. Players who partied with me to go out on an adventure in some of the post-searing Ascalon areas. For a while, I ran with the same group of, like, three players, and I remember that we would just group up and hang out in those areas for hours. I suppose we were just all the same age, as it seemed like we could only log in during the hours after 3 p.m. when we got home from school. <laughs> simply playing this adventure game and enjoying its combat and its other features. Shortly thereafter, factions arrived and Rorik's Searing Blade was now in Cantha, still my warrior monk. I remember less of this expansion because I believe I spent either too much time here in the starting area or too much time in the PvP arena, which is uh, just absolutely some of the best PvP in any game. I do, however, remember taking my warrior and almost in a town crier fashion, shouting uplifting and motivating sayings, at least what I thought were uplifting and motivating, and just saying them out loud for all nearby players to hear. Hours I spent here, just putting whatever positive thought that came into my mind and almost as a nerd's sermon. I would get small gatherings of crowds of people's players who would just sit near me and they would clap and say positive things back. This was my first true experience of what makes the MMORPG genre one of the best in any gaming genre out there. There was no quest, there was no objective. Nothing was forcing me to constantly slog through the game to achieve higher power levels or unlock certain features. Simply we were existing in a time that the MMO niche was fresh. That was possibly my fondest memory of this game. And I think that's why I spent so much time in this community because of those types of moments. Flash forward to today, I decided that I would log into a fresh account in Guild Wars and start over, picking up my warrior sword and shield again, ready to defend the helpless and cast down the wicked. And this game is even 
better than I remembered, and it doesn't disappoint. I think perhaps the best part about Guild Wars is that it hasn't massively changed due to either overbearing updates or modern facelifts, which I don't believe ArenaNet could do anyway, nor do I think they would. Despite the game being nearly 20 years old, there are still players here. I mean, look at this. This is a starting area. This is amazing. Going through these areas pre-searing Ascalon, it just smashes that nostalgia button and it really just doesn't stop. What's interesting is how straightforward the gameplay still is and it was like riding a bike. The attack loading, the way that your skill and mastery points are synergistic and they set up, it still feels as good as the day that I stopped. So I wander on over to the Abbey and pick up my Monk dual class because what I didn't know even back then was that I was just a basic paladin B. <laughs> I'm sorry, but the test was positive. You're a basic bitch. Something about having defensive skills and the offensive power of a warrior, and it just it just fit. And I'm able to get to the small instant zones such as Vobel's Fair, Wizard's Folly, and more. And I even sneak into the northern wall by pressing this lever and rushing to the instance before the door closes. You're supposed to have another player assist you by you pressing the lever and then they run into the instance, which drags you along with it. But the game didn't realize how super fast I was anyway. After creating the instance and getting north of the wall. I had no memory of this place. I don't even believe I ever went north of the wall. And actually, after getting trounced by a band of char that was there, I realized that I am not that guy, and there's a reason that I never went north of the wall. So I take my ragged warrior out into the wild some more, quest a little, and hit level 5. And I think that's about my time to head to what every Guild Wars fan knows, and maybe even some Guild Wars 2 fans who've never played the game understand. The Searing. The Char launch their nuke high into the sky and decimate the people of Ascal. Literally, I am flooded immediately with memories, and of course the shock of this happening. I remember seeing this for the first time, and I had to like get up out of my computer to go and tell my dad that the evil cats are destroying the city. Beleaguered from his long day as a mechanic, he still came over to watch the rest of the cinematic and agreed, evil cats are bad. The main town of Ascalon is in shambles and evil creatures roam around every corner and it's time to continue the journey of my warrior. The party composition aspect really does come into play and of course you were able to choose which henchman you want to bring along with you or if you wanted to bring a person. Of course I grab a monk healer, an elementalist, and a warrior to round out our party. Despite them only being level 3 and me nearly being twice their level, we still didn't really have too much difficulty taking on the mobs out and around this area. This really does emphasize, in my mind, the idea of solo play, of being able to just go out and have fun, even on your own. One thing that I did, of course, have to remember quickly was the limited inventory space that something carried they brought over to Guild Wars 2, thanks, ArenaNet was immediately reminded that I needed identification kits and salvage kits and how useful they were really creating armor, which creating the baseline armor there in Ascalon nearly doubles the amount of armor that you have on your character. It's, it's actually very, very crazy. Of course, with my customized sword, we were out and about first questing around the original area of the Ascalon foothills, and it really kind of brought a propensity back into this game, and it brought it back to life. The same green fields that you were journeying through not like five minutes ago are now completely charred and it's a wasteland. And then this is where the true wonderful nature of this game and what MMOs are came back to me. And that is old fashioned questing. Now, of all the wonderful things that Guild Wars 2 does, it does not do questing, which instead they subbed out for the renowned hearts. Now, to be sure, there are plenty of great aspects of the game, and some of the most enjoyable parts are, of course, the open-world gameplay in Guild Wars 2, but man, having a good old-fashioned quest of bring an item to a town, or hunt down a bad guy, or kill so many of these guys, I truly miss questing, actually, I'll be honest. In my open-world questing travels, I came across one of the glowing mobs, which are essentially the elite challenges, or the, the more difficult versions of them, and, and most of the time, these have some type of very powerful skill that it 
you have to counter and you have to watch. And what's even cooler is that when you have defeated these guys, and I forgot about this, is that your party gets like an uplifting boon where it increases your health and your total mana. It's almost like you're progressing forward and you are given an extra benefit, an extra bonus in that sense. And that was just, uh, that was just such a nice touch. It makes you feel as you are a successful party and, you know, you're able to conquer more because you have more health and you're on a roll almost in that sense. After about another hour, of roaming around I decided it's high time for me to get on to the main mission now the missions are objective based instances mean really meant to give you just a moderate challenge provide some interesting storytelling elements and progress essentially you through these areas this is something that was of course continued into Guild Wars 2 but this tended to be less intensive especially in the core game after killing every single devourer in a two mile radius it was time for me to actually push to complete the mission oddly enough as I'm playing through this particular mission I actually remember this instance and I remember this part where you have to sprint back home running from all the char that are chasing you. I somehow inadvertently sacrificed like my entire party, but hey, only one of us has to outrun the bear. And now everyone is safer because we warned the correct person. I also had a decent ax that I picked up a while ago and I was able to upgrade that and customize that as well as upgrading some of my armor. The feeling of progress just came rushing back to me at this point. And that's kind of where I draw some type of contrary to Guild Wars 2 and their horizontal progression. While yes, it is nice in a lot of sense, it still does feel very good to get that upgrade and to push hard and unlock it, especially on your own. It's like a sense of achievement, I guess. And then just immediately, I, all I want to do is just keep playing. I just want to play more. I want to progress my story. So I gain some power, I gain some new gear, and, but I'm challenged. I'm given that, we'll say, difficulty setup that I have to work for my particular pieces of gear. And and that, that actually was just very nice. I also wanted to see more of the story leading up to Guild Wars 2. Now, I've been able to piece together some things, talking specifically about the story or major character pieces, but I never to this degree understood what really led up to Guild Wars 2. Now, Guild Wars, for all its wonderful and simplistic aspects, has enthralled me to log in and try a mission or grind a level or do some quests something that I haven't really been able to replicate, even after some repeated attempts with other games. But here we are in 2023, playing nearly a 20 year old game, and I can't put it down. It's odd. <laughs> now, of course, it's a strange thing to say that Guild Wars 1 and Guild Wars 2 hardly feel like they're a part of the same game series. Actually, I believe this is why much of Guild Wars has stayed as long as it has. The true nature of the game of Guild Wars is an action RPG, whereas Guild Wars 2 is more of an MMO. And of course, they they do share some similar elements back and forth, but even now in 2023, Guild Wars does something that's special that I haven't felt or haven't found in a very long time. And the game has made me focus on questing and simply surviving in this brutal world. Instead of blindly devastating everything in my wake as I speed run to max level and get into instance grinding, I had to strategically target down enemy healers. I cast protection spells on my allies to keep them alive and mitigate damage. I coordinate crowd control with my Bane Signet to stun a foe and burst him down before he can get his heal off. I mean, there are so many aspects that it just it didn't feel like I was just simply button mashing. I find myself doing more and more in Guild Wars 2, which just press all the buttons and things die. I have to time my abilities, I have to time it off of their attacks, I have to make sure that I'm healing, I have to watch my party's health, I mean there's so many aspects with it. I understand now why some Guild Wars 1 players have said that Guild Wars 2 is a completely different game and they don't want anything to do with it. I get it now. Diving back into Guild Wars 1 has reawoken that experience that I had as a kid. I didn't play Guild Wars when I was a kid. I experienced it. I was perhaps a bit too young to truly understand the beauty of the game, but let's be serious. The idea of you don't know what you have until it's gone is true. This game is a diamond artifact in the memory halls of your mind, and it is no wonder how Guild Wars 2 came to be. Guild Wars was without a doubt a landmark find in the genre and is still incredible to this day. Being a creator of Guild Wars 2, I of course love the MMO and recommend it to anyone. But revisiting my experience here in Guild Wars has completely changed my outlook on how I game and why I game. 
to any passerby who may consider this game and, and are looking for an interesting RPG, I stress that it is 110% worth it. It can be a bit slow, for sure, especially in the early parts. Even without all the bells and whistles of new MMOs, don't forget the roots of why this genre is so great. If you want to learn a little bit more, specifically talking about Guild Wars 2, check out the 2023 Beginner's Guide. This will get you used to everything that you need in the game so that you can be introduced into this wonderful genre. As always, stay caffeinated, folks.